What up tech fans? Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow. We're covering all the biggest games to come out this holiday season on PC, and today we're taking a look at one of the most anticipated first-person shooters to come out this year. The most recent addition in a series that's loved for its focus on teamwork, beautiful destructible environments, and large-scale conflict. Battlefield 4. So it's finally here. After a successful multiplayer beta, we finally have the finished product. And it has to be said that this game is absolutely gorgeous, and not nearly as intensive as we thought it would be. To give you just a sample of how it runs, we took a look at the average frame rate on this level right here, the second stage Shanghai of the single player campaign. Indoors, dark outside, but plenty of lighting and objects flying through the air to test things a bit. Running on our system, which includes a GTX 780 and an i7-4770K processor, we saw an average frames per second of 75.6 on ultra settings, 110.9 on high, and 173.5 on medium. Now the campaign feels a lot different from how it was handled in Battlefield 3. The opening missions put you in a squad of three or four guys, and your teammates show a lot more personality than they did in 3. While the first two missions have yet to put me in a vehicle other than a driving getaway scene for plot, vehicles are used by enemies right away, including having you square off against helicopters and tanks with explosives. It already feels a lot more compelling and entertaining than 3's storyline, which is a good thing considering how dry that one was, and hopefully maintains this energy level throughout, giving you a feeling of actually wanting to play through all of it. Now while the campaign so far has been an improvement over Battlefield 3's, that is only a secondary component to the game to what most people actually do care about, the multiplayer mode. I've only messed around a little bit in a couple of matches. I did a team deathmatch for some shooting practice that wasn't my favorite Battlefield experience, but quickly got back in the spirit of things with a conquest match once again trying out the Siege of Shanghai map that we used back in beta, as well as a rush game on Zavod 311. Stage destructibility is satisfying and forces a change in tactics and positioning. Vehicle supply on the map so far has been enough for squads to make use of them, but not flood entire teams so there's still ground units to make use of. Aside from destructibility, I haven't seen too many new examples of levolution as DICE loves to call it, aside from what we saw back in the beta on the Siege of Shanghai map, including things like road barriers and, of course, the collapsible skyscraper. I've really only hit the tip of the iceberg in terms of trying all the different new maps and content that this game has to offer. I've only done three matches, so there's a lot more playtime to go before I can really really give a full estimate on how things have changed since BF3. I do have to say though that from what little I have played, it's been a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to more matches and even towards finishing the campaign so I can give you guys a full review as soon as possible. Now if what you've seen so far is already enough to convince you to want to grab the game for yourself, you can check out a link in the description for pricing and availability. And while you're down there, if you've been enjoying all this new gaming content, make sure to let us know by hitting everyone's favorite little like button. And if you're not a subscriber yet, now is the best time to become one because we've got a lot more content planned on the way, including a full review of Batman Arkham Origins. Till then, I'm Kevin and thank you so much for watching Tech of Tomorrow.